Welcome to Cyber Space or Cyber Piece of News, the name of the podcast, first ever episode! Yay! So, hi, I am Lydia. I'm the leader of this current youth organization, which is Cyber Space. Melody? Yeah. Okay, I go, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, um, I'm Melody, and I help with PR, and I just help team in general. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Cynthia, the platypus. I have turquoise skin. <laughs> I have a yellow beak. Actually, I'm just joking. <laughs> there might just be a metaphor of how I describe myself. But I'm Cynthia, I'm the assistant leader, and mm-hmm. I am part of the Homo sapiens species. <laughs> okay, so this isn't everyone, but like only we're filming this intro because only yeah. we have time. So it's currently 10 24. Um, <laughs> PM here in Malaysia, and in case you're wondering, why are we filming so late? So special thanks to our PM manager, Aiko, for having a busy schedule and spending too much time at Starbucks in KL. Yes, yes. because uh, we are putting all yeah, this in, she has to spend a lot of time. Yeah, so she has to spend a lot of time at KLCC um, for Starbucks, of course. So you will actually see her after the segment, but yeah. You will see her soon. <laughs> um, so, you, so normally in this introduction where you only get a team member, I know you're very charming, very lovely, you're very blessed with our faces today. Um, now normally we'll be sharing you guys new facts about a certain topic or just chatting about a certain topic that may be related to the podcast or subject. I hope that makes a sense. So. <clears throat> All right, so yeah. this is our podcast. The name is Seven Piece of News. Supposed to be a pun. <laughs> Can't tell all those notes. You know, seven pieces yeah. of okay, seven piece of news. So you know, um, you are you are able to so we can discuss about you know, the involvement of something such as maybe humankind, our behavior, or education, and we'll be talking about. Also, you know, like why our speakers actually decided to do what they are doing right now, or perhaps also how we can take, you know, how we can do ourselves to improve a certain situation. So there will be a lot of things and a lot of needful topics will be touched. Yeah, that and that 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 is the content that will be mostly that will generally be on this podcast. But it's going to be really awkward. <laughs> oh, I I disagree with uh, my twin sister. Yes, we are identical. Our faces are identical. Not really. And, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Not, not really. <laughs> They're grown up, as you can tell. Um, but I disagree with my sister on the ominous part because, yes, there may be a generation gap, but I don't think that that's a bit of a problem. To be honest, by our interviews were awkward. Um, I think it's sometimes awkward because of the Zoom limit. Uh, we use the free <laughs> version because, unfortunately, as you can tell, maybe you can't tell, but we're not <laughs> old enough yet um, to actually go get a job. So yeah, we're, we're cheapskate and I bet you paint things go. <laughs> we paint things go to make it look expensive. But yes, continue on. Um, Please yes, please continue. So it's a bit awkward sometimes we have to stop and tell them, oh, um, you know, sorry for the inconvenience. But I, I don't, I guess really versus on that. I think that it's just that um, we are interviewing people with a lot of authority, like leaders, um, CEOs. And I think it's because we are completely new to this that we're like so newly introduced that we haven't got the heck yet of actually interviewing. So I, I would I wouldn't blame it on being awkward. I would blame it on lack of experience because in ever I always find uh, our interviews very fun and very uh, informative as well. And I think that this podcast is something for us to be also kind of um, vulnerable and to share our thoughts. So like uh how to say we don't really want to add about the screen. That's why we, we are like kind of comfortable with just not wearing always fancy clothes. Yeah. 
No, Melody, how about you? Mm -hmm. I mean, like what you guys said, it's like we invite guests that are related to our topic of the month, and then we just talk and discuss or just ask questions. And then, yes, it can get awkward sometimes because it's like our first time doing this, especially the first episode because, you know, it's our first time and we don't really have any experience speaking out to people <laughs> like me. So, yeah, I won't really speak much, honestly. But I'll just try. And then, yeah, we just like talk and discuss about like our views and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be at, yeah. We hope that this like, podcast episode will like, kind of be a learning experience. So, like... We are already inexperienced yet, but at least we have an aim and we have a goal and we have a dream. Yeah, so um, this episode will um, be about education in general because that's the current key on education. And yeah. we'll be um, not interviewing, chatting with the one and only YB Kione Ching, uh, which is a formal Malaysian uh, deputy, no, for Sorry, Malaysia's formal deputy minister of education. All right, hi everyone. I am uh, Lydia, the leader of a current organization which is led by the youth, which is called Silver Space. So today I'm here with three other members of my teammates, which is Aiko, Melody, and Cynthia. Today, uh, this is our first podcast episode, and today we're here with our special guest, YB Tione Ching. Hello, hi everybody. Um, I'm Amichi. Um, I'm, I'm currently I'm a member of Parliament for Kulai, um, Johor. And previously, between 2018 until 2020, I was also the Deputy Education Minister. So very pleased to have this opportunity to meet all of you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we'll just dive straight into the questions. Sure. Okay, so since our theme is education, so how would you define the word education? Sorry? <laughs> what is your definition of education? I think education is basically an opportunity for us, for human beings, to actually improve ourselves. And I think it's very important. Uh, education is a very important tool for us to transfer knowledge. But also at the same time, it's also... Uh, a platform and opportunity for us to uh, learn various type of skills, uh, communication skills, leadership, etc. So that uh, we, each one of us can play our role in the society. Yeah, I, I think we all agree with that because I think in all of our viewpoints, education I think, can take place anywhere. You know, it might be online, it might be in a classroom, and also might be a book. Or yeah, I think every day we, we are probably educating ourselves as well. Yes, definitely. Um, since there are many like forms of education and like different places where we can like, carry out education, what what was your favorite form? Like online, actually in school, face to face, or homeschool? Okay, I think education, school education, is very important. And it's because I think school education is basically a, a place, a platform whereby kids can actually got this opportunity to mingle around. And I think this is very, very important. I think during this MCO, many of us experience online learning. Online learning to a certain extent, it has its advantage. It has its, we can use the technology, we can do something that previously during the physics class we are unable to do. However, I think as I mentioned just now, education is not just about transferring knowledge. It's also about how do we deal with each other and also develop our personality and also various types of skills. For example, leadership, for example, our communication skills, um, etc. And that's why I think school education is still very, very important because only with school education, whereby kids have this opportunity to play various types of sports, which is not something that online education can offer. And also, it's also... Because we only have uh, school education is also the only way whereby we can allow our kids to actually participate in various type of extracurricular activities, um, for example, any society that they are interested in, etc. And all these actually I think is part and parcel of education, and also a very important part of education. And therefore, I still believe that school education is still very important. It's not something can be uh, replaced easily. 
and, and and therefore is also I also strongly believe that during this um, COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, school should be the last place to close. Uh, should also be the first place to open. I disagree with you because I think that what makes uh, school education like, extremely important is that it is very unlike other forms of education. It's kind of like the base of how students are educated because well, um, to learn your ABCs, uh, you go to school. So I do, th- I do think that it should be valued more. Yeah, I, I think that is it is just too important. I mean, and therefore when, when we talk about at school education, I think it's not just academic wise. Academic of course is important. Uh, but I hope that we don't just value or evaluate education just by how many A's the kids are going to achieve in the national exam, etc. I don't think that is the sole purpose of education. I think it's also very important for children to build up their confidence, their communication skills, their leadership, etc., which is not something that we are able to do it at home. Of course, I think to a certain extent, we can still try to do it, but it's only at school whereby you can let the kids to mingle around with the children of same age and therefore they can develop their personality and also various types of skills, which I think is more important than just purely knowledge transfer. Yeah, I, I, I stand by what you say. I don't think there's any better way to actually even talk about the importance of education. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you all are happy to go back to school? <laughs> or have you go yeah. back to school? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty fun to like learn new things every day. Yeah. My my kids, I mean, the youngest one, uh, he is only five years old. When last year, when I when I start sending him to kindergarten, he every day he almost cry. He will cry every day. Uh, I said Friday because he you know after Friday no more no more school for Saturday and Sunday. But now he feels so happy to go back to school. I think this school closure during pandemic actually made our kids understand how fun school activities can be. Uh, and I hope they 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 continue this spirit lah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I I I have continued that spirit as well. <laughs> yeah, same. I mean, like yeah. for me, I was very like your son, like because I think it's a lot of people like um they're not used to school yet. But imagine I think when they grow older, they eventually realize how important school is. I mean, for example, I cried until like year two, but I think it's hard to blame is because um I had my like my Cynthia with me. I had like my twin sister with me all the time. So like I I think that. We just come with each other. So like we, we don't like dare to reach out. It's so like a year three when like we were separated. It was like very sad. But I'm like, uh, I was favor. So you were put in different classes, you say during year two. And therefore yeah. you feel like very insecure and I feel. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, but I think it's, it's, it's part and parcel of learning as well. And then we, this is the things that we all need to go through. And finally, you will have your new friends and how do we move on, etc. And this is not something we can duplicate at home. It's very tough for parents to actually try to duplicate it. I mean, even for myself, I mean, during pandemic, during all this online learning, of course, I, as a parent, I try to do my part by guiding my children for their school learning, uh, like doing more activity, like exercise book or activity book for mathematics, doing more at, at, uh, uh, activity book for Bahasa Malaysia, for even English or even Chinese. I will try to do that part. But I think for them, the more important part is like the chances to mingle around with your friends, to play along with them. And therefore, I during this MCO, I also fully encourage my kids to go out and play with the neighbors' kids because I think that should be their childhood. I don't want their childhood to be just burdened by all the exams or the textbook, etc. But I hope they can have a good memory about their childhood and not just like being being locked in the house and <laughs> studying. Yeah. Um. What What inspired you to work in the education field? Like, why did you want to work in the education field? I think education is is so important that none of us should actually, uh, sh- every one of us should be involved with that. Education is the only way for us to improve our 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 the quality of living. Education is the only means for us to bring anyone from the B forty group to M forty and perhaps even to T twenty. Basically. Education is the mean, is the chance for us to actually change our life and improve the quality of our life as well. So um, 
because of that, I, I strongly believe that education is for all. And how do we ensure that the minority group, uh, marginalized group, especially the marginalized group, like for example, orang asli, for example, even like some of the stellar children and also special need children, how, how do they also have access to quality education so that they will not be merely a dependent of their family member? So that they got this chance to actually, for a B40 kids, if they got the chance to go to university, it's highly likely that he is able to bring out the quality of life of his family. And therefore, for B40, eventually they will go move to M40. So to me, education is just so important. And I believe that with the right education, we can, we can produce a very competitive generation, new generation. And then, of yeah. course, from Malaysia to a higher level. As you mentioned before, like some people are like can't afford to go to school. So like, how should what should, what should we do to like, ensure that everyone has a chance to go to school? You know, because like some people like can't afford like textbooks and like yeah. like what's uniform. the way? Like what yeah. might be the way forward to ensure that everyone will have the chance to go to school? Okay, textbook. I mean, for government school, we uh, I think we we set that we we solve that problem because in yeah. government school, mm -hmm. all textbook will be given free to the kids. To the kids. That's uh, nice. However, however, there is one category not entitled to receive or not entitled to to apply for this uh, textbook loan program. That is the Stadler children, meaning children who are not government uh, Malaysian citizens, uh, meaning that they are not, they don't have Malaysian citizenship. For for this category, they cannot borrow the books from the government uh, and they have to pay for their textbook and, and I, therefore I think that the, the support from the community is important the support from the community is important I mean for the government of course we try to do our best but however because our resources is also limited and therefore sometime yes there will be different differential treatment for Malaysian children and non-Malaysian children uh, I think we are not at the stage where we are prepared and we are ready to give all citizens and non-citizens same treatment, whether for education or for medical purpose whatsoever, um, because we are still a developing country. So I think to a certain extent, that is understandable. Uh, but I think the whole society, the community, we need to be a little bit more supportive, especially when we have this campaign, meaning zero reject policy, or uh, we, we try to uh, instill the idea that education is for all, whereby we should not shut down our door if the kids want to come to school. And the whole society should play a role, whereby if you notice that, for example, a kid, uh, 8 years old, 9 years old, 10 years old, at the age that they are supposed to go to school, but they are not, report to the authority so that they can investigate. Because in Malaysia, you must understand that primary school education is compulsory. Meaning if your parents refuse to send you to school when you are age seven year old until 12 years old, uh, the government can come and investigate and they can charge the parents if they think uh, necessary. Uh, however, of course, I would say 12 years old is not sufficient because now is the time that where everybody should at least get a diploma uh, or at least should, should, should continue study until the age of 18. And therefore, during our time when we were still the government, we were thinking to expand compulsory education to at least from five or to at least the age of 18. Uh, the, the difference would be after form four, form three, sorry, after form three, uh, children will have a choice. Students will have a choice whether they want to go for form four and form five, which is more for academic, or they can go to vocational schools, which is like uh, uh, for technical training, etc. Uh, so, but we, we were actually thinking to expand uh, compulsory education to the age of 18 so that it becomes our right, the rights of kill children to receive education. And this is to avoid situation whereby some children, maybe they are still very keen to go to school, but the parents force them to drop because they might need extra hand to, to do household work or for their family business. Yeah, I agree. So like moving on, I guess I'm just going to ask you this question. So like many parents are sending their children to international school now. So like what do you think the government should do to gain the confidence from the parents towards the national education system? 
Okay, I think of course that international school of course impose a very big challenge to national school, government schools especially. Um, but that is understandable uh, because when the society can afford, definitely they would like to get something better for their kids. And for international school whereby parents pay a lot of tuition fees, of course understandable that the quality that they are getting is actually better than what the average national school can offer. And however, however, um, I would say government school will still be able to attract uh, Malaysian parents to send their kids to national school simply because uh, I think international school is a more elite setup because for the parents to afford uh, uh, for parents who can afford to send their kids to international school, uh, they their family need to be, if not T twenty, I think about T twenty lah. If they are not at T twenty, good, it will be quite 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 burdensome for them to to send their kids to international school, and and therefore this elite setup, of course, it has a certain advantage. But I would say it also doesn't really reflect the composition of the society. Yeah. Um, you myself? Yeah. I'll oh, say you could go first. For me, myself, I have this discussion with my husband as well. We have three kids. I would not say we are very rich, but me, myself, as an MP, my husband as a doctor with government, uh, we, we had this discussion that whether if we can afford are we going to send our kids to international school? And then the conclusion that we arrive is we are not going to. First of all, of course, it's very expensive. Like, and we got three kids. And then uh, if three kids going to international school at the same time, I think it's quite a huge financial burden for us. Like. Uh, but second is also because we think that we want our kids to grow up in, 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 a, in, 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 a, in a society or in an environment that is not so elite. I hope that they can have friends from different backgrounds, which I think is also very important as part of their education and learning and growing up experience. And therefore, uh, national school is still our first choice. And, and eventually, my first kid and the second kid are now in uh, government school. Prim one is primary one, one is primary three. Uh, of course, the, the third one, five years old, I also just register him with a government school. So when he's seven years old, I think I'm going to send him to the government school as well. So what I'm saying here is parents would want different things for their kids. Of course, for, for parents who can afford, uh, want to send their kids to overseas to further their study, international school will be a very reasonable choice. Uh, uh, but for certain parents like me, who might want their kid to actually grow up in a more mixed uh, environment, whereby you have you have classmates, you have friends who are coming from B40 group. you got friends who are coming from N40 group. you got friends who are coming from T20 group. If you want your friends to experience all these things, then national school is still, is still, is still the best choice. Um, I think national school just need to make sure that uh, we have maintain certain quality because, uh, of course, for the parents, if they can afford, they will not tolerate on that. Uh, they will own that. They will not accept anything that is below the par. So maintain the standard of national school. Uh, I don't think it's reasonable to expect national school to give the same environment or the experience like international school. It's, it's, it's unreasonable. For kids going to international school, their monthly fee could be 3000 could be 5000 Some perhaps even more than that. I am not very sure. But kids go to national school free. So it's irrational to expect the same setting. But I think national school still have its strength, still have its advantage. Uh, it really depends. Go back to the choice of the parents. Yeah, I, I can agree on like the more expensive part of international school because like, I also have two siblings and they were also under international school. So it's like a burden for my dad. Definitely. It won't be easy. I mean, even for me, I think... Too expensive, lah! <laughs> I cannot imagine any. <laughs> Especially if I send them to the international school for primary school, no way, man! I think one kid will end up like a bungalow. <laughs> no. I think it's too expensive, lah. And I think I I did well, even though I went to government school. So I think 
uh, yes, of course, it's good if my kids can have some, some receive the education for international school. I believe you, what you are receiving now, the quality of education that you are receiving now is fantastic. But I still also believe that national school also can produce talent uh, for, our, for, the, for the nation, for the, for the society. Yeah. So, the results that can provide are still the same. Right? Yeah. yeah, it depends on how you use that knowledge. It's yeah. true, true. Eventually, it's how, how much you, you let them actually develop their potential. Uh, so, so international school, of course, got their strengths, got their advantages. But I think if we are willing to spend more time with our kids, we should be able to make sure that they are not doing too bad as well. <laughs> I also agree. I mean, I think that um, international school, like, I think they, they may have like uh, maybe a greater variety of activities, but I don't believe like um, our countries like government schools, I think they are also have a lot of advantages in a way because my brother, uh, he, used to, he used to go to government schools and I think my brother has grown to be like a very successful kind of person. So I think he also, I think part of him also wants to thank government schools. Because he has, he has grown up with a very talented you know, person. Um, I think it will, it will take some time for her to actually see the difference. I mean, the, the mm. students or the kids uh, who go through international school and children who go through national school. I think perhaps another 10 years, we might be able to notice some differences. But as of now, uh, like for example, uh, Cynthia and Lydia, your, your dad is also went through all national school system. He even went to public university. I didn't go to public university because I went to Chinese independent school for my, for my secondary school. And, and, and he's doing great. He's doing great. And of course, I think we, need, we might need further details. We, we might need more research to eventually evaluate what are the differences, uh, international school system and national school system, what are the impact over the development of the kids. Uh, because, I mean, international school eventually is still quite, or perhaps like only uh, uh, perhaps 10 years in Malaysia, or perhaps even slightly longer than that, I'm not so sure, but might not have that many students for us to notice the differences. But I hope, I hope, and, and I believe in, uh, government school setting can still produce talent. Can still produce talent. Okay, so yeah. moving on. Oh, okay. um, yes, Madeline, any other questions? Or I call? Okay, so I'm just going to have like one last question. So... What is your mission? What is your mission, your vision, and your dream for our country in terms of education? Like, I think education. I I hope education can be less politicized by our leaders of the nation. Uh, I think that is very sad. Uh, that that is also why perhaps yeah. some parents uh, give up on na national education systems. Uh, I think in Malaysia, because of our unique context or unique background, uh, mother tongue education, or, or uh, sometimes the discussion for education issue are not solely based on education factors, but there are also other factors interfering with our decision and also our, our discussion, etc. Uh, I, I hope... Uh, bit by bit we can do away all these things and uh, we, we really come back to the core issue of education and talk about the quality of education um, like like for example for Chinese community because they think to build a uh, Chinese school is so difficult and therefore uh, they have this campaign call you cannot close close down any Chinese school even though the Chinese school maybe has very few students uh, still reluctant to close it down but if you talk about school, if you talk about quality of education, if a school only have less than 30 children, actually it might not be the best for our kids. Of yeah. course, if it is too remote, then I fully understand. Meaning there's no other options. Then yes, we, we need to, by who or by who, we need to maintain the school because this is the only school available for the community. Uh, but there are situations whereby... Uh, Maybe just another 2 km away, we also have another school that only have like 30 students. 2 km away, we got another school that has another 50 students. If you combine those two, maybe the whole school, you will only get 80 students, which 
I think even though it's not ideal, but it's definitely better than a 30 school stu- 30 student school. Uh, but however, our community, our society, we are able to talk about this rationally because it's just too sensitive. <laughs> it's just too sensitive. You know, people say, can I, can I, you cannot close down our Chinese school. If you close down, then you become a sinner. Uh, yeah. you, you betray the better for, for the mother tongue education, etc. So, I, you, while I understand all this emotion, I also feel that it actually clouded our judgment and sometimes made the discussion too emotional uh, we might not be able to offer what is the best for our children. Because I see it myself, uh, I, I, it's a sekolah kebangsa, it's a, it's a national school, it's a sekolah kebangsaan. Uh, less than 10 students and therefore I persuade them to actually close it and then we send the kids to a school which is about 15 minutes away and the kids are so much, kids were so much happier because they got more opportunity to explore different types of activities previously one class maybe one student or two students if one mc not coming then he or she will be alone in the classroom imagine you need to sit there for 7 30 until 1 or until 12 30 how boring how bored will it be uh, but when you go to another school where they have like at least like 100 students suddenly they got this opportunity to be a librarian they got this opportunity to be a school prefect they got this opportunity to participate in school sports day. They got this opportunity to participate in basketball, team activities, etc. All these things are the, you cannot experience all this in a school that have two few students. Yes. If the school only have 10 students, how do you want to have a sports day? I don't know what you can do actually. <laughs> Maybe we'll yeah, okay. this already. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's last in school, so especially in our school, we are able to meet a lot of people. So we obviously can share like what we believe and all that. I think one thing that all of us will agree with here is on feminism. We Aiko is actually a feminist. She posts about feminism in her post. And we all talk about it. We all try to advocate for it, especially in our organization. So you also campaign for feminism, I guess, in our in your recent International Women's Day, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So um you advocate for like women's rights and basically a lot of like, you know, um female our females in general. So how do you think that education can incorporate feminism to that? How do you think after education can support women? It, it, it needs to be included in part of the syllabus. We need to address this issue through education because we need to admit the, the reality is some the the senior generation sometimes it's not easy to change their their mindset. Yeah. Meaning for us to, to convince them, telling them that uh so to, to, to educate them about gender sensitivity or, or gender equality, sometimes it's just too difficult for them to digest and, and understand. And therefore, we, we need to address this issue through education. We need to teach our kids, for example, we need to have respect for each other. Um, uh, my body is my body. You cannot violate my body without my consent, yeah. uh, despite my dressing. This is something that the elder generation, the older generation, I'm, I have to admit, even some of the teachers, they will not be able to understand. I, I have some senior teachers, male teachers, who, who strongly believe that it's okay to teach the girls to cover up their body as oh, no. part of civic education. Of course, I mean, using the modern standard, this is totally unacceptable. Because yeah. you, you are putting the blame on the on the victims already. We should educate boys to respect women. I mean, to, to respect each other. And, and stop having this idea that because she wear very sexy and therefore I can do whatever I want to her. That, that is completely wrong, isn't it? But even teachers from government school, some very senior one, perhaps already 50 years old and above, they, they, they would think that to teach girls to dress decently is okay which of course I have a big argument with them. Lah. So that's why I think to, to address the issue of feminism or gender equality or gender sensitivity is through education. From ed- through education, we need to teach the girls and boys to respect each other. Uh, we need to respect the minority in our society, uh, despite their sexual preference, etc. Um, we, 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 we might not agree with them all the things, but we need to have this 
decent or we need to have this respect for them and and we cannot overly impose our value o- uh, on other people i think that is that is very wrong and uh, and therefore of course i think the ideal situation would be we incorporate all these things in our syllabus and then use through the school education uh whatever is national international school private school or even government school we 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 teach our kids about all these idea and concept and finally girls and boys we are free to make whatever decision we want so long as we don't violate other people we don't we don't uh, into other people etc etc and you know this gender balance doesn't mean that boy needs to have this carry this burden to 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 feed the home and family i think we we need to free them from this as well i mean this is unreasonable and uh, and girls or the or the wife in the family also can play a uh, play the role of uh, um uh, the role to the breadwinner etc etc so i think we can do a lot of corrections corrections through educations yeah strongly agree yeah um, so who has inspired you and why just like give us one person who has inspired you inspired me uh, to to join politics or what um to do what you do like now I think my dad uh, was very play a very important role because he was also a DAP member uh, and he also strongly believed that uh, politics is a mean is a way for us to to change our country and make it a better place and he gave me full support um, when I was offered to contest in the general election in the 12th general election that was like 2008 so you can imagine how many years ago 13 years ago yeah Um this is like a like another question so uh, I mean you're the former kind of deputy education minister again but what happens if like okay let's just say that you are the education minister again what are the first three changes that you will implement into today's current education system and why three changes ah uh, uh, I think uh, I think it's very important first of all uh, to recognize you EC uh united as a examination certificate uh, because i think uh time for us to move beyond politics and, and also to give the proper recognition uh, because if our government school or public university can accept students from a level uh, for ib etc uh, so i mean seriously speaking we shouldn't reject uec i mean people holding uec Other than that, I think uh, we need to strengthen the training or the or the training for the teachers um, because I think teacher is a profession and the quality of education can only be as good as the quality of teachers. And if we if we don't spend in we don't invest sufficiently on teachers training, especially the current even the the incumbent uh, the assisting teachers, uh, we will we will not be able to. Uh, to have the this new concept or use a new way or whatever i mean to offer the best for our children other than that i think is also the third one also uh, special education is very important um, a lot mm. of special need children still don't have uh, access to quality education and therefore they are forever a dependent in the society and uh, i strongly believe that if we are able to provide Uh, uh special education or better special education for our kids uh they will have better opportunity to actually improve their standard of living uh eventually they might not be a dependent in the society they, they might be become independent as well okay so we know that malaysia is a multicultural and well multiracial country so if you could only implement like one way like just one way uh because it's very limited then what would uh, to actually promote around uh the racial and diversity like what would you do i think i think all the while we have been trying to promote diversity uh but however i think of course politicians need to need to bear a very huge responsibility lah because well sometimes when we are trying to promote diversity etc there are people who are uh, campaign for for uh, specific race etc and therefore the whole discussion becomes so complicated and muddy uh, and, and we are always stuck at the, at the, at the same issue etc so frankly speaking i think we 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 need to educate the general public 
we need to educate the general public. If the general public co always continue to uh, elect those like racist member of parliament, then they will continue to use the same tactic to get support, which will be a very uh, vicarious circle, and then we can never end this. And therefore, I think, uh, yes, we, we need to educate, continue to educate the general public. And hopefully, more and more people can can tell uh, who are the MPs that really want to serve the nation um, and also bring Malaysia to, 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 to bring forward a uh, better Malaysia, a more united Malaysia. And those, there are certain MPs who only want to play political issues for their own personal agenda. We're back again, and um, we will ask. So we will just move on to. We will just continue our conversation that we had just now. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I guess um, we were talking about unity just now, and so basically, um, I guess uh, we, can we talk about the environment as well? I feel like. Um, obviously, education does matter on how students act and personality, but I think that the environment, in a way, is also quite important. So, um, we concern environment as well. I guess this our organizations are trying to well, it, it enrich our environment. So, how do you think like how important is green and eco friendly schools? I think definitely that is very important. I think we all can can. I think. All of us would agree that uh, pollution has caused too much damage to the to the to the mother earth, and therefore, if we are we are not paying attention now, uh, we, we there's no guarantee that how many more generations can still live and survive uh, in this world. And of course, I think this is our duty. We are, we are duty bound to actually make sure that we our the coming generation are going to inherit a healthy and green. Uh, for us and not a uh, not a uh, 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 dying earth and therefore I think the importance of environment or the green environment environment friendly etc all these concept um, is, is too important to be to be ignored by any any sector and of course again school is a very important platform for us to implant the idea to make sure to instill the idea uh, to our younger generation and then uh, actually many times they, they actually become the leader in terms of like green environment or the environment friendly, etc. They bring back the idea and practice at home. Yeah, I agree. I think um, because now we're talking about like a lot of important matters like environmental awareness as well as education for all. But then um, I think sadly, I think today's generation or at least uh, my year mates, um, they, they fail to actually recognize the important matters. Like a lot of my classmates, they, they complain a lot about uh, their own education. Like personally, I think that, I think all four of us here, uh, me, Aiko, Melody, and Cynthia, I think we, we all recognize our privilege, right? We get to go to a good school with good teachers. And I think we're all very lucky. However, I don't think my, um, like our other year mates, it's already some of them, they, they don't recognize uh, their luck or their privilege. So a lot of them, they were often just, I mean, especially to these trends, they, they tend to focus more on like social media than on their school, right? uh, or, like in their own education. So for example, a lot of my friends, they like to complain about uh, the subjects they are having, their teachers, and overall how much uh, a school is, right? uh, how much burden you think a school is. Yeah. Like, advice or what um what what would you have to tell those people i think you raise a very important point and, and that's why eventually international school doesn't mean that doesn't guarantee the success of any students etc because eventually it's still back to your attitude if you have the right attitude i believe that you will be able to shine 
uh, uh, anywhere. And despite the fact that you receive education, a national school, a government school, or private school, international school. So eventually, the attitude will decide on how far you can go uh, and whether you are going to become a respectable figure, uh, someone that uh, can really bring changes to the society. Um, therefore, eventually, yes, what you are saying is absolutely right. Uh, there will be children who have this privilege to go to international school, which many, many of the children doesn't have this privilege, do not have this privilege. Uh, we also have certain, some, some children, even for, like, for Orang Asli, for... for Kawasan uh, Pendalaman, interior area in Sabah, Sarawak. For them going to school, maybe means that they need to walk to walk one hour from their home, from their house to school. We read about it, especially during this MCO, how some people actually need to travel two hours in order to get the Wi-Fi signal for them to submit homework or to follow, follow to submit their, their, their coursework. We got we got a university student who need to cry out a tree in order to get internet access to internet so that she can attend university exam, etc. So so eventually you can see if we want to compare, of course there are always people who are actually at a more privileged position than us. But at the same time, if you look carefully, they are always people who are less fortunate than us. So it really depends on your attitude, which one you want to compare to. If you're the only compared to people who are perhaps even more privileged than us, yes, you will forever sitting there and whining and say, why I'm so unlucky, why this, why I'm not her, or why I'm not him, why I didn't get this, why I didn't get that. But if you compare yourself to other people who are less fortunate, then you will realize that how lucky you are already. And therefore I would say, to a certain extent, the, the world is also fair. You might come from a B40 families, but because of that, you you your growing up experience maybe help you to able to appreciate whatever you have more. Yes. Someone yeah. who perhaps come up from a daddy, mommy, maybe a, 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 a they are the daughter or the grandchildren of some listed company, probably listed company, but eventually they, they might not feel happy because they always don't feel that they are they don't think that they are the lucky good lucky one or the or the more privileged one so yes i think to a certain extent the world is not exactly fair in, in all things meaning that we all have like our parents will have the same level of income no it doesn't that it doesn't work that way but to a certain extent we are being compensated by another way as well so Really, it's really the attitude that actually decides or is, is more important than the where we receive education. I strongly yeah. believe that. I think yeah. I agree as well. I think one thing that a uh, problem, I guess, in international school with some students, I'm not talking about all, like some students, they, they're too arrogant because yeah, they I know. Right? That they yeah, they don't know, level. they don't like value money as much as the like less fortunate people. Yeah. Um, I guess what they need to realize that just because you work in an aircon classroom, just because um you know you get you you have a cleaner environment doesn't mean that you are going. It doesn't mean that like you you don't have to value your education because in the end, international or national uh, government, um the students that they produce are still going to be the same. You know, yeah. I mean, it's something to me. Uh, I agree. I think that uh people tend to like less appreciate what they have. I mean, if they're more fortunate than others. Um, I, I think that lots of students, they, they think that when they go out of school, maybe because of their parents' condition, they believe that they can just rely on their parents and hopefully their career will uh, rise or be successful. But um, I think they fail to realize that once you're out of school, like once you graduate from university, you're all alone. Because, for example, our parents, I don't think they would give us the whole money. But I, 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 for example, my father and my mother, they believe that we should all work hard. So therefore, I don't think that uh, a lot of, I think a lot of like today's generation, that, that, that's what they fail to understand. That once you, are, you go out of school, like you're all alone. So like that's when reality is like, you're, yes. that, that's when you're most vulnerable to reality. Yes. Yeah. We were also talking about the environment just now. And yeah, I think it's equally as 
um important because and, and that's just school of problem is also that they also don't value the environment they have. They think that the maids or the cleaners are going to clean it up. That's why we, the school, have to like un- uh, establish a lot of recycle bins and everything. I guess my school, I think just in our case, is much more eco-friendly and they're more environmentally aware. So basically, apart from helping the environment, um, how do you think that they, the environment can help and impact the students' learning? I think um, it's, it's very important, of course, it depends on the um, schools also should bring children uh, to, to have actually more activities at the nature, and whether they bring them to, 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 to experience the beauty of nature as well. But yes, I, I must admit that, especially for national school, whereby transport might be a problem, whereby you want to bring students out for any outing activities, then they might have different types of constraints. But I think ideally, of course, uh, how do we actually include nature as part of our learning and bring our children so that they got, also got, got the opportunity to experience the beauty of nature? Thing is also very important so that they know how to appreciate so that they know how to appreciate mother nature yeah um so i think we can all agree that maybe change in education is also important uh, okay um so basically, I think maybe the last question from me might um, be that. So, like, how, how, how uh, what's like, your ideal learning environment? Okay, I think, first of all, I, I think classroom science is very important. Um, one of the problems that we face in urban area, 40, sometimes even 50 students, uh, because uh, uh, we don't have sufficient classroom and also teacher. Uh, so I think this is an issue that we should overcome. I think uh, quality education means that we cannot expect the teachers to handle 50 children at the same time. I think there's too burdensome some for them already. So therefore, uh, talk about ideal education, I think with one teacher or even lesser than that of course lesser would be ideal it, it would be best but better but i think uh quite uh, quite 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 difficult to achieve like uh, understand or i mean uh, taking consideration all the constraints that we have in our national school system and then uh, ideal situation uh, education uh, situation cannot be exam oriented i think we need to pay more attention to the personal growth for each and every students uh paying more attention to their personality building, uh, uh, forming a present personality, a positive personality, so that they are able to contribute back to the society. Like what you said just now, it doesn't matter really like how many A's you can score in the exam if you eventually you still don't know how to appreciate whatever that you are having now. Uh, you are not going to have a fulfilling life. You are not going to have a fulfilling life. Um, one thing you mentioned just now that is like, Okay, after you finish your university, uh, your parents not going to let you uh, inherit everything they have. Then maybe you ask you to work hard. Maybe there are some other people who will inherit the companies that, that their parents have established or their grandparents have established, etc. But eventually, it really depends on how much hard work you have put in. And therefore, you, are, you will be able to te- test the fruit of success or even... Uh, not so success also doesn't important or the fruit of failure because... It really depends on how much hard work you put in, how much effort you put in. And then you will be appreciate even failure because yes, we are not going to succeed all the time. Sometimes we are going to face setback. Sometimes we are going to face uh, failure. But because I put in the effort already, then I shall have no regrets. And that actually is part of my life as well. So the key word here is fulfilling life. It doesn't matter how much you earn. It doesn't, it doesn't matter... Uh, what type of car you are driving, what type of house you are staying, etc. It doesn't matter how, how much money you have in your bank account, etc. But if you feel that you have lived to the fullest, then congratulations. I think you can say that you live a, you live a 
life with no regrets. And that is what I think more important for every one of us. Because the, the moment one day when we leave this, this world, at least we are able to tell that, yeah, whether it's 30 years old, 40 years old, 60 years old, or 80 years old, or even 100 years old, we have lived to the fullest and we are satisfied. Uh, with ourselves, we feel happy with ourselves. That's more important. Uh, but if you refuse to put your heart, uh, I don't think you are going to taste the 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 food of success, or you are not going to have the same feeling. So I think personal growth is very important, and uh, it doesn't really matter how many A's we get in the exam because we must admit to a certain extent, some students may be more more academic inclined, but there are some students who are not. But it doesn't mean that their life cannot be very fulfilling. I mean, I agree. I really think that attitude is so, like, you know, a little bit more valuable than academics. And I think that a lot of my friends, they they really don't really focus on, like, their own character development. So they really focus on how many marks they get. So, uh, for example, I got a friend, like, he, uh, he are off, like, very often or frequently stressed over work. So, I mean, because, you know, a lot of students nowadays, they go to tuition, so I did not have much time to uh, have, like, uh, I guess, uh, uh, enough or uh, efficient, uh, no, like, sufficient period of time to be able to do their homework, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they, a lot of people tend to stress over academics more, and, like, they, they fail to recognize their uh, personal growth. So, I think uh, you agree that change in education is very important, right? Yeah. Yeah, so um, uh, what subject that is currently not in today's uh, or this country's education system do you think should be implemented that is not currently in this? First of all, I think our education system should move away from module-based education. Meaning that I think nowadays we still talk about what subject, what subject, what subject. And then it, 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 it makes our education system so heavy. Because eventually we talk about teaching one subject, it means that at least one period a week. And I don't know for your school, but one period means in secondary school, it will be 40 minutes a week. Or for primary school, it will be 30 minutes a week. Actually, all these good models or all these good values should be incorporated. And then we become, uh, the word that used by a Finland education system is phenomenon education system, whereby they, they include all the elements and then they, 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 they try to learn all these elements through project-based education. So I would not say that we need to add more subjects because frankly speaking, we have too many subjects already. We have too many subjects already. Uh, when we say, even like for, for moral, uh, do we need to have a subject called moral? Actually, it could be quite silly as well because shouldn't moral something that we learn through daily life and can through everything i mean i mean do we really need to have a subject called moral to teach us about kindness to, to teach us about loving or respect etc yeah. should, should, should yeah of course perhaps it's very difficult to teach you about respect through mathematics <laughs> 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 i think Bahasa, English, or Chinese, etc. All these language are good, should already teaching us all these things already. Yeah. So, I, frankly speaking, I would not suggest any new subject to be introduced, but I think all this value, all these important things, new concept, etc. Uh, uh, like, for example, gender equality, gender sensitivity should be included in part of the syllabus. And then yeah. we, we blend everything together. And, and otherwise, you are going to have like one subject is called gender sensitivity or gender equality. <laughs> Another subject is about environment. That will be that will be a disaster for our school for our kids' lives. Yeah, actually, yeah. in our school, I don't think many people know this, but we do have a subject called morals. We do actually have a subject where we need to learn respect and everything. But, we actually have two. One is tutor. The other is case. It isn't as much. But we do have to still learn morals. And if you're in primary, you have something called um, P PSHE. And yeah. you, need to, you need to have a moral subject. But yeah, I definitely agree. I guess gender equality needs to be in your daily actions, not just in school. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, some countries actually, they, when they have this moral, it's about conflict 
solving or problem solving, meaning they, they don't use it to actually teach about kindness, to teach about all this value, but they actually try to provoke the students to think about how to solve some issues that they might be facing. For example, if the teachers aware that student A and student B have a big fight over something, they, they will use this lesson to, to, to actually try to have a discussion that involve all the other students in the classroom to, to help, uh, help us to understand all these values better. Um, I think more important is like we need to constantly practice all these value and, and that should be the direction of our education. Education of like memorial, etc. It shouldn't be just like on paper and then we how we answer question correctly in the exam. I think that is a waste of time. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so like, uh, one, like one more question for me. So, which is, okay, so actually just like, that's not how you mentioned about like one whole subject with all the elements of subject in it. Uh, I think that our school can be evil. It, I mean, it does have like, it does have this kind of subject, which is called IBL. It's inquiry-based learning. So um, it's a very creative subject, right? First of all, you we were a bit confused because they, they just mashed like, together a lot of history and geography and just yeah. a lot of other, yeah, side subjects all mixed together. But I, yeah. I mean, um, at first, of course, a lot of people like fail to recognize its advantages because we only learn very less about history. Like, uh, they gave us one whole history textbook, but we need like learn a few pages of it. So a lot of people like they they thought it was very disadvantageous. But actually, I think hearing what you spoke, I think it's very beneficial because it does relieve a lot of students and yeah, relieve their stress. But it's a very creative subject after all. So um, one more question for me, which is. What factor in school education do you think makes it so brilliant? Like, what's the main factor that you think that uh, makes it kind of like one of the best forms of education? Is that the teachers, the right. students? What are the key ones? Sorry? Um, what is like the main factor that makes uh, school education extremely beneficial? Uh, is it the students, the teachers, or the school? Teachers is very important in the education system because as I mentioned just now, the quality of education is as good as the quality of teachers. And therefore, if we, have, if we are not able to raise the standard of teachers, uh, the pro product of our education system will, will is very difficult for you to see the improvement. And that's why I think investment in teacher training is very, very important. Uh, and by, again, uh, it, it, we cannot just everything throw at the teachers. Uh, that would be very, very unfair as well. So we need to give them the sufficient support. Uh, parents, ministry, uh, even the whole community, we also need to play our role to make sure the teachers also get whatever support that they need. Uh. Yeah, so I think, like from, I think for this whole kind of session, I think we've asked a lot of questions that require a lot of like long detailed answers. So I think that we should kind of Relax, kind of like uh, the whole meeting. So let's just ask some quick fire questions. Like some quick fire questions. Uh, try we will try to answer them or like around five minutes. So I go be while asking them. We will just ask you like really quick questions, and you need to try asking them really quickly. So this is gonna be very fun. We're gonna try to answer them all at five minutes. So okay. yeah, I'm gonna answer the questions like personal. Yeah. So we we'll, yeah. uh, I might. I will set a timer and then we'll see how many questions we can go through, okay? So okay. I'm going to start. You can start anytime you want. Okay, um, number one, what was your favourite subject back in school? Favourite subjects, I would say Mandarin. Okay. Um, um, what was your least favourite subject in school? Physics. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, I mean, like, what did uh, did you really enjoy your school life? Yes, very much. Same. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is your perspective on uniforms? Um, actually, I don't mind that children don't wear uniform. I don't mind children not wearing uniform to school. But of course, there is another, another argument saying that uniform is the best because it means that B40 children won't feel... Uh, won't feel that they are the, the difference between the children's won't be won't be highlighted because if you are allowing 
children to wear their house clothes there. Of course, the B40 group, maybe their, their clothes not so not so nice and therefore they might feel like a little bit like intimated. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, what, uh, tell us your viewpoint on homeschooling. Homeschooling, I think, um, I don't think it's, it should, I don't think it's the best for the children, honestly speaking, because I think we still need the school setting so that kids got opportunity to mingle around with other kids. Okay. Um, what is your favorite way to study? To what? Sorry? Uh, what is your favorite way to study? Um, I think, of course, paying attention to school, to, to teachers during classes and then complete all the homework assigned by the uh, school assigned by the teachers to me that is the minimum we should do and I, I spend quite some time to do revision myself okay um what do you think was the easiest subject for you um, i think mandarin okay um what was the hardest subject for you basic of course <laughs> Okay. Um, what is your all-time favorite book? All-time favorite book? Oh, nowadays, it's very difficult to think of one book. Uh, okay, if I can use a comic, uh, I, I like One Piece and also... Yeah, I, I like One Piece and also Dragon Ball because I think they are very simple, straightforward, but also give me the fighting spirit. <laughs> Wait, but, but doesn't like, One Piece have like, so many like episodes and like chapters? Yeah, there's too many episodes until I cannot... I am not, I'm not really follow the latest episode already. I, I stopped uh, quite some time ago, but I'm hoping that I can see the ending and then uh, pick up from halfway. La. <laughs> I believe I have a few years I didn't follow the latest episode already. Yeah, like almost 1,000, you know. 1,000 already. Therefore, and I realized that actually it doesn't, it doesn't move too far away from where I stopped. So that's quite <laughs> scary. <laughs> okay, um... Why do you think change in education is important? It's important so that we can raise the quality of education. Okay. Um, what was your most memorable moment in school? Um, I think participating in the debate competition is my favorite one. I think a lot of people actually... Uh, four of us actually wouldn't prefer debate because it's really oh. stressful. And a lot of people... Just yeah, like six. But I thought you, I thought you two like debate. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's really stressful. But then like, um, I don't know. It's like, uh, I feel like like in during our first competition, of course we weren't like, wow, like very successful yet. Uh, like we love debate. However, I just feel as if uh, it's because like they give us like only fifteen minutes to prepare. So it's a bit like like the time really makes us stress. But yeah, but debate is fun overall. Yeah, to be honest, I quite like debate too, but sometimes it's like, you know, like a lot of people looking at you, it's like very like nerve wracking. Yeah. I'm like, um, next question. Yeah, Melody, go on. Personally, I don't like debate because I'm not like very confident like speaking in like a lot of people. So, yeah. Continue. Um, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, we all have our different hobbies, so it's okay. But for me, I, that, I like debate because I think it's very thought provoking. And then it, it really like um, let help me to analyze uh, different issues, etc. Uh, able to see things from different standpoints. So I think that's why I enjoyed it. Yeah, but it's okay. I mean, we 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 don't need to make sure everyone loves it. I mean, we all have our personality. Okay. Um, what subject do you think is heavily underappreciated? Um, underappreciated perhaps is like PE, physical education, uh, because I think uh, actually that's very important. Uh, at least I try to make sure my kids go out exercise, running or cycling at least half an hour a day, because I think that's important. Like, we need to have a healthy lifestyle. And yeah. if they have a good habit of exercise, uh, this is something that is going to benefit them for a long time, for their whole life. Yeah, I agree, because yeah. it makes you healthier. Yes, it gives you fresh mind, healthy body, and then because we have healthy body and therefore I think government need, need no need to spend so much on, on the hospital and the medical, etc. healthcare. So it, it actually has multiplier effect. I think it just 
too important, I mean, for us to neglect it. Okay. Um, uh, we only have a few questions left. So, um, what do you love so much about learning? Oh, I, I love it so much because I think when my dad gave me my name, he, he actually got a story behind it. Uh, my name, Tio Ni Ching. Ni Ch Ching is Chin. La. Uh, it doesn't mm. have a special meaning because all my siblings will use the word Chin. And so, Ni is actually Nian. Nian in Mandarin can mean uh, reading can also mean miss. I miss you. Is, is the, the, the milk. And my father gave me this name because he's Young, one of his younger brother actually disappeared a year before I was born. And so that he yeah, disappeared, he's really disappeared. Don't know, don't know where he is, don't know whether he's still alive or not, uh, but he disappeared. Uh, so when my father gave me this name, he basically is to means that he missed his brother. And therefore he gave me. That's so sad. So you never got to meet your uncle? Um, yeah, that, that particular uncle, I never had the chance to meet him. I mean, my, my, my father, he was the eldest one, and he got uh, six younger, bro younger brothers. And this one that got missing is the fourth one. Uh, one last question. Um, do you prefer A-levels or IB? <laughs> wow, well, that is tough because I didn't do both. <laughs> <laughs> I do UEC, so not really applicable to me. <laughs> so um, I hope everyone has learned something from the chat with YB Kiona Ching. And this is going to be a segment that we usually have in each podcast um, episode. It will be called Time Travel Time. So it's where we recap what we have learned from the chat and share with the audience uh, our perspective on things as well. So. All right. Um, okay. So who like to start the recap first? I guess I'll go first. So like, I'm so I learned more about education and our government school education system. And I guess we just learned like how she defines education in her own words. And yeah, wanna go next? Anyone? So, uh, I can. Uh, Lady, I can if you want. Yeah, so uh, I, I agree with Melody um, about like uh, YB Tony Ching's uh, definition of education. I think, it's very, I think it's a very correct definition to me. Uh, I also uh, know and I, because this, this chat has broadened my perspective of education. Like now, uh, I know about how education will teach us. Uh, is, uh, education is everlasting. It's gonna last throughout our whole life. Just getting a good point. And I also learned about the implementation of certain topics in um our current school system. Like or, or, or I think like why we can achieve opinion on that. So like how racism, feminism, uh, environmental awareness can be implemented in education. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I think that the implementation of something in the curriculum can bring so many benefits. And I also think that what I think I've learned is that we need to stop politiz uh, politicizing education. Education is not a political issue. It's not something that you should fight about. It's nothing. Everybody deserves the right to education. Fundamental human right, not an issue that you can use for your own benefit and your own political agenda. I think that's one thing that we do. Yeah, I agree as well. So, um, we agree that this chat is something is like very education informative as well. Yeah. Okay, so what is the topic that's very related to education? So I think it's something that three of us really adore and love here, which is books. Wow. All right. So I think uh, we will go around and just share like what books we're currently reading. And yeah, just, just share your thoughts on the books. So um, I think I'm going to go first since I introduced this topic. So the book that I'm currently reading is um, Agatha Christie, Poirot Investigates. So um, I think like I'm very, normally like hesitant to pick up an Agatha Christie novel. It's because um, this is a short story collection, but her normal novels like Orient Express and ABC Mother, I am scared to read it because I'm very easily scared and very fearful. So 
Yeah, I'm not really in for like horror mystery. I like stuff that like you know doesn't have a scary kind of a uh, factor to it. Uh, but then to me, this short story question is quite light hearted. Yeah. I mean, like I mean, of course there are, like a few murders in here, but yeah, I I think in the end, uh, this one is much more in my opinion sounds more like 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 hearted than the other than other books. Right, who who wants to go next? Um. I guess for me, I'm reading Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Gosling. I just started, so I don't have much to say. I'm still like reading this book. I'm really slow, but like there are actually like many things in this <sighs> book. <laughs> and then basically, like like I guess it can show like it can show like how people can like manipulate the words and turn like it into a whole new story. I mean, there's definitely like more to this book, but that's all I'm gonna share for this. So yeah. So um, which. Which character in like a certain story do you guys think you guys are most like? Like most like, uh, um, that is an interesting and very fun question. So I need to think for a while. I think I think I'll go first because I'm pretty decided. Uh, I think it'll be one like character out of the Jane Austen, uh, books because I am very. Uh, I, I like Jane a lot, so I'll say Elizabeth Bennet. I, I see a lot of myself in her, of course I'm not exactly her, I'm not like, very confident, I definitely won't have, I don't, I don't have like a problem. You're going to say Hermione Granger. Yeah, I thought you were going to say Hermione Granger. I was about to say Hermione Granger, but I would say both of these characters because I see most of myself in both of them. Okay, maybe a little bit more in Hermione Granger, but yeah, uh, I really, I think I see a lot of my personality, personality traits in them. Uh, yeah, so I think that's what I think because I see myself in them and like their personality, and I think that's what makes them my favorite uh book character. Yeah. What are you saying? How about Melody? I think I already know. Yeah, Melody. No, I I want Melody to go. I mean, like if you want like choose from like Harry Potter, then <laughs> then I'll choose Luna because she's like more like on the eccentric side, and I guess I'm not like that. Like I mean, I guess sometimes I can be really weird, and then like she's friendly, and he's also like very like optimistic, and that's how like I usually am. She's not yeah. problematic. Yeah, that like a lot, a lot like the people I know are quite problematic, and they're very really much biased. But you're one of those people that are not problematic. And, you're, you're quite eccentric in a positive way. Like, you're smart, which goes to the fact that you're Ravenclaw, but uh, you're eccentric and you're nice and you're not problematic. For me, I would not. I, my friend, um, at least role model character would be Jeannie Weasley, but I'm not like her. I am trying to be like her, but I'm trying to be myself as well. I don't relate to her at all. So the person I would go for is Alex Bailey from the Land of Story series. I think, now thinking about it, I'm definitely not like her. She reads a lot of books, but at the same time, just, just cut out the whole book and King Arthur part. I am definitely like her. And I have a twin as well, so yeah. Oh, uh, but my Lydia, Lydia's not like Connor. Uh -huh. So what do you guys think is like your go-to genre, like your favorite genre of all time? So, I <laughs> I just guess I, I guess like me and Cynthia can just relate to this more because we like we prefer like fantasy. I guess it's just what like we like. And then Lydia, on the other hand, she likes classics. So you, if you want to like share more about that, then go ahead. Um, I I'm very really I'm more wary than you guys. Um, I don't I don't think no. Um, I I I I think that for fantasy, right? I love fantasy as well. So it's something that I love as well, you know. Uh, I, I feel like YA, I, I'm very more wary. It's just that, like, how to say, one of my favorite genres will always be classic. I, I, I'm not like an expert yet, but uh, I think when it comes to my, you know, you guys and like the other year mates, I feel like out of our whole year, I'm probably one that reads classics and like, and she enjoys them. Because like the other things, they just find it boring. Like, I know. And I think it's just some of the writing of the videos. But yeah, I love plastic, but like I'm not taking an expert yet. Oh yeah. I, I, I don't have a lot, but I at least have like a decent amount that is satisfiable. I don't know. Yeah. It's you know, it's satisfying. It's like I okay. can't. Yeah, Cynthia. Yeah, I'm getting for me um a reason why I don't like classics is 
because it's too long winded. Like I remember me and Melody, we have we had a discussion in six about great expectations by Charles Dickens. And it went south. Like we didn't really bother analyzing like the characters. We wanted to hate that girl. Like we said Pip was annoying. We said Pip was a gold digger. We said Pip was materialistic. We said Pip was awful. We said Estella was a cheater. We hate Estella. And the reason is because of her Pip caused a tsunami and all that. And all of us just really Pip. Pip. And we all of us really hate the characters, which was a bit funny. But I guess that's like we don't want we don't I guess I guess it's bad to say, but we don't appreciate these classics. We, we tend to make fun of it, but that's right because it's just not our taste, not our stuff. Yeah, fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, it's totally fine. But then at the end of the day, it's fine to have different tastes in books. Like, yes, it's okay. So, um, how do you guys think that books are related to education, which is basically like the main theme of like today's uh, episode? Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I guess it just, yeah, I guess it conveys morals indirectly, but in a twisted story. Um, non-fiction are more straightforward, obviously, they do educate you really straightforwardly, and, but fictionals, they just try to, like, how say, um, give you an implied morals indirectly and really nicely, in a more interesting way. Yeah, how about you, Melody? I mean, like, for me, right, I, like, I read books. And I enjoy the story, but like I most I I use it to like find more like vocabulary that I can use for my English writing because it'll be more helpful. Cause that's what made me like want to read and like enjoy reading, so I can just become better at English also at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually agree with both. Nice. I agree with both of you. Uh, nonfiction is very direct when it comes to educating because it's informative, and then fictional books are more as if like they they let you have morals. Directly, uh, like as indirectly, so it's like indirect and direct. Also, the melody. I think that a reason on why I'm very coherent and like you know I, I'm fluent in English because of reading, and that's why I like a lot. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think that uh English is definitely you can learn English from books, but you still can also learn ethics and you know facts from books as well. So I think that books play a very huge part in education. All right, um, so I think that's about it for this episode. Seven pieces. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's not like perfect. It's not the best quality, but we try, and we just hope that if the audience can take something out of this uh, episode and learn from it, then it's already good enough. So yeah, thank you and bye. Bye. Did you just like fall on the, fall from the chair or something? I fell from the chair. Yes, yeah. Hashtag no filter. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, I don't know. I don't know if this meeting is just a freak out session or actually like preparing, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm freaking out, okay. I don't know if we're like <laughs> even yeah, filming an just... intro right now. Hi, I'm Lydia. Um, and then um, I got three people with me today. I go, Melody. Yeah, but I'll probably freak out right then. Okay. Hi, I'm Lydia. I'm panicking right now. Oh my god, I cannot. Hi, hi.